Hey there, my name is Ben and I teach you how to write Unity shaders from scratch. Today's episode, what we're going to do is go over this plasma effect. Plasma is actually an old shading technique, uh, but now with modern day GPUs, it's actually a fairly easy uh, effect to achieve, as you can see here. What it is, it's creating these type of uh, trippy looking colors uh, using just simply sine waves. Maybe this is a ring effect and just kind of adding them on top of each other. I'll be explaining what's happening here. Uh, and you can actually use this plasma effect in many ways. You can add an image. You can then, instead of you know displaying it as color, of course, you can tint it. You can uh, do multiplied colors. You can also use it as a way to um, distort the, the other textures, right? You can control this in real time. And you can also, of course, change the time scale here. Cool. That's all for the introduction. Let's jump right into it. OK, so the setup we have here is very simple. Right now, it's just an unlit shader. And what we're doing is we're spitting out the color uh, that's coming from main text. Main texture is not supplied here, so it's just coming in as white. In fact, we won't be using main text for a while. OK, so the first thing we want to do is create a plasma function going to be a float3 plasma, plasma, and the value that it's going to take in is going to be a UV, and it's going to be a float2 for UV. Next, we want to, let's just kind of quickly make sure that this is working. So we're going to take uh, a fixed 3, we're going to call this a plasma, and what we're just going to do is pass in the plasma, uh, the i.uv as a float2. And here we're just going to return, uh, let's just return the uv directly. We'll just do float3 uh, uv. So because uv is uh, a float2, so it has rg. And we're we'll just throwing a 1 in the, in the blue channel. Here, plasma will now be a float3. So it should be able to display the uvs this way. Let's also, let's set this to zero. So now we're used to seeing this uh, UV map. All right, so the next thing we need for our plasma shader is a scale and a time. So what plasma really is, is manipulation of the UVs in the X and Y, uh, manipulating each uh, X and Y individually by sine waves and adding them together to create a plasma, uh, a pretty trippy type of plasma effect. Uh, so first of all, we need a scale and time. So let's go ahead and create those. Um, both will be uh, floats as well. So we'll just call it scale. I'll do it as a float. I'll set it to default one. And we'll also create a, a time scale. So time scale. Uh, and this is just kind of uh, to speed up or slow down time. We'll also set that as one. Uh, here in the plasma, oh, here we still need a float, both scale and time. Oops, great. So here in our plasma shader, what we can do is, now that we have a scale and time, we can actually start to create our very first uh, UV. So the first thing we wanna do is actually scale the UV. We only really need to scale this once uh, but when we scale the UV, we don't want it to, you know, shift and change all over the place, right? So in order to do that, what we want to do is UV is equal to UV times the scale. Uh, so the scale we're going to use is underscore scale minus UV, no, not UV, scale uh, divided by 2. And by doing that, what we should be able to achieve is if I were to manipulate this to 10, it will increase in intensity, but not uh, shift around. It'll also also notice it's been offset it to uh, where this is 0, 0. Uh, this is in the negative and positive region, like a graph. Cool. So let's we can leave the scale at uh, 10, actually. The next thing we want to do is have time. Uh, time can be part of our wa uh, sine wave functions. So let's create the very first sine wave. Um, let's go ahead and do float wave one. 
is equal to sign. Uh, and we're going to put in UVX. So we're going to manipulate the X channel first to, uh, plus the time. In fact, for time, what we're going to do is have a float T uh, time is equal to underscore time, which is a unity function, dot Y times uh, the time scale. Let's go ahead and do that, add it to time. So we can actually display our uh, V1 right now, or sorry, our W1 right now. Let's go ahead and display that. It'll just display in the red channel. As you can see here, it's just a wave moving across the screen. Kind of cool. Next, let's add a second wave. So our second wave will be W2, U, V, and Y. If we do this, it'll start to move diagonally as long as I create a float final wave, W1 oops, plus W2. And let's display the final wave. All right, as you can see, we are now only displaying the hot spots when both waves meet and one is at its higher point. So in order to kind of offset this, we can actually take the second wave and just kind of give it a bit of a divide by two or times half, right? Times half. Cool, so it's kind of offset it a bit, but this is still not particularly interesting yet. Cool, so with that change, as you can see, now the wave is starting to move downwards at a pretty slow rate. I mean, if we wanted to increase this, just the downward speed, we can just boost this time and you can see it moving down real quickly while kind of going slowly to the side. Cool, let's just change that back. Next, what we wanna do is have a third wave and this will now create a diagonal wave. So to create a diagonal, it's simply uh, UV X plus uh, X plus UV Y inside the side wave. Let's get rid of this times half because I don't think we need to shift it uh, and of course, we want to add it to our final wave. Cool. Now you can start to see that the plasma is kind of coming into effect. Uh, there's another wave that is going diagonally. So if I kind of remove these, th uh, these two, you'll see that uh, W3 is a diagonal wave. W2 is a vertical one or a horizontal one. W1 is vertical, right? And when you add all three together, only the hotspots are coming through. So wherever they're overlapping, it's creating this type of plasma E effect. That's what's happening here. Cool. So earlier on the second wave, I had times half like this. Uh, that's incorrect. It should be uh, plus half uh, because I think when I displayed the wave two, it was a little bit darker and I noticed that. Cool, so as you can see, once we create the final wave here, uh, now it looks like this. So it's a little bit different than what we had before. Cool, so let's go ahead and create one more thing and this is called rings. Now, in order to create rings, we'll just call it uh, R, I guess. Uh, what we need to do is do the square root of the square of the X and the Y uh, added together. So. Um, the squared of the x and y, let's go ahead and do that first. So uv dot x times uv dot x plus uv dot y times uv dot y. And we want to take the square root of all this. Uh, and for shader, square root is just sqr. And for shaders, the square root is just sqrt. Let's go ahead and display R only. And we should have a ring here, which is good. What we want to do is multiply, no, not multiply this, but add time onto this and it will start to uh, scale up and down. Or we cannot see the scaling up and down unless we sine wave this whole thing. There we go. Uh, it's actually scaling in, not scaling down. Cool. 
Um, so let's add this onto our final wave. It's kind of our final piece. Uh, so imagine that we have these three rings before. We had uh, a horizontal wave, a vertical wave, a diagonal wave, and now we're adding onto this R. And that's, this will create enough variation that you'll start to see some sort of plasma effect. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is not really plasma. It doesn't look, I see some of the animation. Uh, the problem is because all of the data is combined into one single uh, value, right? So even if we added this here, it will just start to turn colors, but it's not working. So what we want to do is offset the waves from each other. So in order to offset that, it's just sine and cos. Let's go ahead and use that. So the first one will be sine. Let's go ahead and use sine in the final wave. And the next one, we can just do cos. There we go. As you can see, we are starting to get a bit of a plasma effect, similar to what we saw originally. So another thing that we can do is um, kind of scale these up. And the mathematical way to scale things that are inside sine, uh, inside the brackets of sine, is to multiply it by pi, or subtract it by pi. So let's go ahead and multiply this by pi, and it's unity underscore pi, and do that to both sides. And now we're starting to see a more mathematical correct version of plasma. Let's go ahead and increase the scale to see if we can get some interesting effects. We could. It looks pretty interesting here. Maybe by 20 is probably good. Uh, we can try to change some of the offsetting. Maybe changing timing, multiplying this by half was not good. Uh, maybe multiply by half was better. Kind of create a little bit of variation there. So as long as you kind of create the formula where we're adding, you know, four different types of waves, uh, well, three different types of waves and rings on top of each other, you can kind of create this uh, interesting plasma effect. Now, keep in mind that this plasma is going from a range of negative one to one. So to quickly change that into the proper um, range, what we want to do is force it to zero and one. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make the final wave uh, equal to this. And then I'm going to manipulate the final wave by times half plus half, right? Uh, is equal to final wave times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. And then if I'll just return it like that. Now, this didn't work because final wave was declared as a float. Let's declare it as a float three. All right, of course, it didn't like that at all. We're going to have to reword this a little bit. So final wave will be a float three. This will be more like, um, it's gonna call it final value. It's gonna be a float one, stick with that. And we're gonna put that here, uh, return zero in the blue channel. Let's go ahead and there we go. Now we have a uh, Final, range, uh, final wave in ranges of zero to one. Now, what's the purpose of the, all this? Yes, we can use this effect. We can take our color, we can, uh, our texture, sorry. And what we can do is we can tint it. We can just take color.rgb times the plasma, right? Uh, save that off and I'll put in another type of image here, right? We can, let's just use a different image, yeah. So we can tint it, we can do subtracting, subtraction on it. Uh, you can control the level of tint, of course, with, let's just say, another, another value of maybe 0 0.1, the amount that you want. My bad, 1.1, let's do that. You can manipulate this by adding plasma, oops. Manipulate, uh, adding plasma, you can add however much you want. And one of the biggest benefits of this though uh, is really manipulating the UVs. So often people, uh, let's say you don't want to have another texture that is creating 
uh, some sort of distortion or you don't want to use another texture as a texture sample, you want to create your UVs through Plasma. So you can go ahead and create your Plasma and instead of i.uv here, uh, I can just pass in plasma.rg, right? Color is this. We're gonna just uh, display the color, right? And of course it's manipulating wildly. So let's go ahead and do, uh, take in the original UVs. We'll take the plasma.rg and we'll just simply add it on multiplied by some random scale that uh, you can you can create. Maybe even that is too much, right? Uh, if you're going to use that as UVs, I guess you don't need to change it to 0, 1. Uh, you can leave it between uh, negative 1 and 1, right? So that could kind of create a more cooler ripple effect that you might be looking for. So yeah, that is it for this particular lesson. I just wanted to show you how you can actually kind of create these uh, distortion effects without any texture whatsoever, just using some math and some sine waves, you can create this effect. Cool, that is all from me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.